Hey, welcome back to the Success with Listings podcast. Now, this is a very, very, very special treat that I've got for you today. And this, today we're going to be getting into the top 10 reasons why the top agents, I mean the top agents, top 10 reasons why they focus on listings. You know, uh, there's a reason why those of us that are uh, mega, mega agents or top of our game, making a quarter million or more a year, uh, you know, working nights uh, uh, or taking nights and weekends off um, and, and, and all that. There's a reason why we're able to do it. It is listings. But also, it's important for you to psychologically understand the top 10 reasons why agents focus on listings. And I get into a little bit of why some agents don't focus on listings as well. Uh, but, but what you want to do is you want to be able to train your subconscious mind to understand how important this is. And when the subconscious mind is on board with what you're trying to do, you will be able to move heaven and earth to make it happen. All right. So we're going to take you, I'm going to take you to a seminar where I was able to teach the top 10 reasons why mega agents, why top agents focus on listings. All right. Enjoy. Welcome to the Success with Listings podcast, where we help you get success in the real estate game the easy way. Now you can get off the roller coaster of feast and famine and out of the rat race of competing with every other agent in town. Hi, I'm Nolly Williams. I took over a thousand listings during my first 10 years in the real estate game. And in this podcast, I show you how to have success with listings. Let's go. Now, how many of y'all know you should be probably taking more listings? Raise your hand if you, if you want more listings. Raise your hand if you want fewer listings. All right. So it's all about more listings. And you already know that you should be uh, taking more listings, right? But I did, you know, I asked my team leaders. I got Diane and Melanie here. And I said, what do, they, what do, what do we need to learn, right? And it's like, well, tell them why they should be taking more listings. Duh, they should already know that, but I'm not going to take it to assumption, right? If you guys didn't want more listings, you wouldn't be in this class. So I know you want more listings. I'm going to give you 10. Re- How many of y'all, I like top 10 lists, right? This is Nolly's top 10 reasons why you should be taking more listings. Number one, well, I, I tell you what, we're not going to go to number one yet. I'm just going to ask you a question. I'm, I'm eager to get into this. Focusing on listings will do what? It will, on seller listings, will allow you to get what you want faster and allow you to have a life. Okay? Do you want a life today? You want a life? Because here's the thing. Let's say right now you had 13 uh, listings, right? And, you, and you're about to go on that cruise. Anybody ever went cruising? Raise your hand if you've never been on a cruise. Shame on y'all. You need to go cruising. Cruising is fun, guys. So, oh, no, the, the, the boat might... Sh- don't, you stop watching Titanic. You need to go on a cruise. That's fun. <laughs> so if you had 13 listings today, are you going on that cruise? Yep. Yeah, I'm going on the cruise, right? Because I'll tell you... What's your name? Cindy. Cindy. You know, Cindy... Um, I, you know, I got to leave town for a little while. Now, I'm not going to tell her I'm going on a cruise. I mean, you're going on a cruise. <laughs> Ain't nobody going on a cruise around here. We got work. To- Cindy, I'm going to be out of town for just eh, a week or so. You know how the wife is, you know. And what I need for you to do, Cindy, as my colleague, can you just babysit these listings for me? I, now, I'm not going to tell Cindy how many I have. She might start hating. You got 13 <laughs> listings. What? You know, I just, and, and then Cindy's going to say, yes, I'll do that, baby. Now, if any of them go into escrow, Cindy, I'll go ahead and pay you $200. Wouldn't that be all right? Yeah. See, see how the ha- the cowboy hat's working. Uh, she, she, I would have paid her four hundred, but she settled on two hundred. Good, good for me. Now, if you had, let me ask you this question: You got thirteen buyers, and they want to buy now. Are you going on that cruise? Oh Unpack your bags. You ain't going nowhere. You're on lockdown because thirteen buyers. Now, it's not a bad problem to have for you. For me, it'd be a bad problem, but it, it may not be a bad problem to have thirteen buyers that want to buy today. Okay, in this market, it'd be kind of crazy. But you ain't going nowhere, right? Sellers don't care. I just call them up. I'm going to be out of town for a little while. What you doing now? I, well, you know, I, I'm, I'm just going to go and have a little fun. You know, by the way, I like to travel a lot. Y'all see me on Facebook? You know, y'all know I like to travel Maui and all this kind of stuff. So whenever I take a listing, I know I'm not going to have it that long, right? We're going to uh, uh, 30 days before it goes under contract, right? So I just happen to tell, oh, by the way, um, you know, I scheduled a... Uh, vacation, right? During, oh yeah, that's no problem. When you're first meeting with them, you need to tell them that, right? That you got, 
By the way, Gary teaches us that you block out your vacation, and we do that. My wife and I sit down. We block out our vacation for the whole year, right? We block out our play, and then we work in between. I like to do it that way. So focusing on listings is going to help you with that. Uh, how Gary Keller teaches this. I like a lot of stuff that Gary says. Most of what he says um, I've tried to follow. The rest of it I'm still trying to understand, right? So how much, what percentage of listings does Gary teach us in Millionaire Real Estate Agent that we should be focused? I mean, what percentage of our business should be listings? What percentage? Uh, maybe 90 percent, uh, 70. What do y'all think? 90 percent. 100 percent. Right. That sounds a lot. Who else? At least 60 percent. Right. By the way, let me take the temperature of the room right now. Uh, not this kind of temperature, but this. How many of y'all are doing right now at least uh, one listing a year? Raise your hand. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah. All right. Well, we got some newbies in here. That's all right. How many of y'all, you guys doing at least 10 listings a year right now? Keep them up. Keep them up. 20, 40, 50. Okay. Just taking the temperature so I can see how fast we need to go through the content, right? So here's what Gary says in Millionaire Real Estate Agent. He says, there are so many great reasons to devote how much? How much? All of your time and effort to taking and marketing listings. Make listings your primary focus, and uh, that's Gary Keller. Now, here's the thing. I just, I didn't know any different. When I first got into, into the business, uh, Diane Gomez and I, she taught me a lot, actually. We, we were in the same office, and, uh, and Jana taught me a lot, too. But the thing is, I didn't know anything, so I just read the book and did what it said. I was dumb. I didn't know it, wouldn't, I didn't know it couldn't work or might not work. I just read it, and I didn't, I didn't have another plan, right? And it just so happened that it works, right? I just followed what, it, what the book told me. And the first reason that I found out that I, you know, to focus on listings is that seller listings mean more marketing opportunities and branding, right? Y'all know I like to do that branding, right? right? And, and it's, it's, what you get to do is you get to put your sign in the front yard. So for every listing that you take, you have a billboard that is marketing you. You can't do that with buyers. Right? I remember when I, when I got my, my, um, my signs made, and I, you know, I, it was just like, I get to put my picture on the sign. That's cool. Like, I like that. You know? How, you, some of y'all have seen my signs around town, right? in those abandoned houses and whatnot. Uh, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but I, was, I, you know, I, I got so enthralled with the process. I told the graphic designer, I said, man, uh, you need to bump that, that head up like the face. He was like, Nolly, the, the, it, you're just seeing it on your screen, but it's going to be a lot bigger when, we, when it comes to you. I said, no, nah, man, that's too small. We need to bump that up. So finally the guy, and he sent it back another proof. No, nah, it's too small. Let's, let's bump it up. You know? So finally he got it to where my chin, y'all seen them, some of the signs around that. My chin is on the bottom of the sign, and the top of my hat is cut off the, the very top. I mean, it's like boom. I was like, now we're talking. Well, Nolly, where are we going to put your phone number? Man, put it in tiny print. Uh, you just fit it in there somewhere. We got to have the picture real big. Well, true story. I got those those signs back, and I opened them up, and I was like, boom! I was like, whoa! It was big, a big old head. You talking about big headed? It was big, right? And so I was like, dang! I'm embarrassed to put these out. I go to a listing appointment, and they say, hey, Nolly, when are you gonna put the sign? Oh, we'll get to it. And I put the sign in the yard real quick, and zoom, drive off right before they get this sign out of my yard. What is this thing? What do you think? You running for mayor around here or something? Right? But but that but the thing is, every time that I put a sign out, it's marketing me. It's branding me real big, right? Now my sign, I've, I'm used to it now. I've had them for a lot, number of years, and they look real good about, from about two blocks away. They look real nice. Y'all <laughs> right? you know I like to rap a little bit. I got a little rap that I'm working on for listings. It's like, it's like this. Y'all ready for it? Are you putting in your signs? Are you showing buyers' minds? I don't mind. Bring an offer, and if it's good, I'll have my clients sign. <laughs> But here's the thing, y'all didn't care. But here's the thing, guys. Are you putting in your signs or are you showing buyers' minds? See what I'm saying? By, brand, by, by putting in your signs, you're marketing and branding you. That's reason number one. Reason number two is you get more control of your time, right? There is not that same sense of urgency with buyers as there are with, is with sellers. When is the best time for a buyer to look at a house? Right now. Right now. Okay, anybody else? By the way, there's no wrong answers in my class, so y'all just say what comes to mind, and it, do, it doesn't bother me. When's the best time for a buyer to look at a house? Nights and weekends. Nights and weekends. Who else? Before it goes on the market. 
before it goes on the market. Hey, there you go. That's the best time, baby. But here's the thing. You, you, know, what, you know how buyers look at it? Here's how I answer that question. The best time for a buyer to look at a house, for, for them, is when it's least convenient for you. Not only what are you doing tomorrow night? I'm free tomorrow night. Tomorrow, let me see, that's, that's Saturday night. I'm free. I got nothing going on. But Sunday night, you know, we, got, we have a wedding. And all. Let's do it. You know what, Nolly? I'm, not, I'm free Saturday night, too. You know, I'm free. But, uh, and then I say, well, Sunday, I can't do it. Well, I happen to be free both days, Nolly, but let's go ahead and do Sunday. That works better for me. You see what I'm saying? It, not that they try to do that, right? But it just seems like, you know, you had a Fourth of July picnic. Uh, do we, I need to go look at it now, right? There's not that same kind of urgency when you're working with sellers. I work, you know, it's a nine to five, right? Nights and weekends off, right? Now, the other thing, now, not to say that you ain't going to work, yeah, some week, nights and weekends, but generally speaking, when you work with sellers, they're appreciative. They apologize when they call you after, Nolly, I'm so sorry, I know it, but we did get the offer in and I want to talk about it. It's seven o'clock, I know, right? Reason number three is that seller listings maximize your per hour compensation. You know, you can work about, you can take about 25 listings a month and keep it up, whereas you only would be able to work maybe six, seven, eight buyers a month. God help you. If you there, there was a time, check this out, there was a time when I had 127 listings in uh, inventory at some point, whether it be active, uh, pending, and so on. Y'all know I used to do a lot of short sales, so some of those were short sale transactions that we were working processing for other people. But, I mean, imagine having 50 buyers or 100 buyers. I can't even imagine that. It, it, it's not even something. But if you have the right systems, which I'm teaching you a lot of that today, then you can work almost any number of listings. Does that make sense? Reason number four is volume, volume, volume. Okay? Here's a guy um, that he's actually, we, reason number three, you're, you're, we didn't, reason number three is your per hour compensation. That's what I meant to say. Your per hour compensation is this. How much time are you spending on every listing? I have a 46-step. Now, yet, by the way, if I get off, y'all, please correct Nolly. Say, Nolly, you off, man. What you, that ain't the right slide, right? I don't mind. Y'all need to loosen up, right? <laughs> if I'm teaching this class, I'm going to have some fun up in here. I don't care what you, you know. I, I got three hours to be up in here. I'm going to have some fun. But here's the thing. I ha we have at the Nolly team, we have a 46-step listing process. Okay, what I teach is that you should be only doing, as a listing specialist, about three, maybe four, or maybe five of those 46 steps. Okay, we're not going to go through all the 46 steps today, right? If, you, if you're real nice, I'll send you uh, those, my 46-step system, right? And I'll, and, and I'll kind of explain what that's about. But when you're working with buyers, you end up having to do a little bit more than that. You should be working on dollar productive activities. Make sense? Uh, reason number four we already covered. Um, and, and this is a guy that's going on his way to, to, to work with a buyer. And, and why is he like that? You know, he's trying to eat lunch. He's making phone calls. He's breaking the law. Why? Because the buyer wants to go see it now. They don't have any other time that's available to them, right? Reason number five is increased market awareness, right? The more, the more market analyses that you do, y'all like the way I said that, market analyses? Um, I've been practicing, by the way. Uh, the more mar market analyses, that's how we say it in um, market analysis is. That's how we say it in Texas, right? How do y'all say it? Plural. Al analyses. Look at her. Miss All right. So market analysis, the more of those we do, right, the more in tune we are with the market. Is that not correct? So if I do, if I'm doing 100 listings a year and you're doing 10, right, I may have a bigger bank account, but the point is I know the market a lot better than you do because I've done 10 times as many market analysis you know, to, to get to that number. Every single time that you do one, you become a better market expert, right? Number six, listings bring you more business, period. I want to share something with you guys, and I want you to take this to heart. It's something that you already know, but I want you to really take it in and think about it, okay? For every listing that you take, you should have four closings. And I'm not talking about referrals from, from, from the seller. Because with every listing you take, you guys already know this, you should get another listing if you properly market it, and you should get two buyers that buy. That's four escrows from one listing, right? So it's a four for one. And that's the reason you can't take a buyer and market a buyer to generate more, you know? That's not counting the referrals that you're gonna get from the seller. We'll talk about that in a moment, how you're gonna get more referrals. Reason number seven 
if a deal falls, you just pop it back active. How many of y'all use that terminology, pop it active? Nobody, huh? I, I travel. I used to think that everybody would use that because we use it around the office all the time in, our, in the Nolly team. I used to think everywhere I went, like, I, I'd just be like, pop it active. But it's just, it's a Nollyism. You guys are going to hear a few of those, these things I come up with. So around the office, we're like, man, we're about to pop this one back active, right? You know how that sounds? And this is your name? Cheryl. Cheryl. I, some of y'all I like to pick on, right? Depends on how you're looking like this. I might not mess with you. But Cheryl, she's smiling and everything. She's ready to get picked on. So Cheryl, Cheryl and I are doing a deal together. Obviously, she's the buyer agent. I'm the listing agent, right? So Cheryl calls me up and says, and we got an escrow going and everything like that. We're in the option period. And Cheryl calls me up and she says, Nolly, we just got the inspection back. Oh, Cheryl, it's bad, huh? I knew it was. It's got a lot of deferred maintenance, huh? Yeah, I, I bet you it's bad. Cheryl, was there something you were calling me about? Cheryl's like, yeah, we need to talk about this. Cheryl, you know we got seven offers on this house, don't you? No, I'm, I'm just kidding, y'all. Don't go gangster on it now. You go, we, we, got, we got seven offers up in here. Uh, do I hear? Do, do, I, I'm hearing some, so, something about y'all don't want the house, huh? Because I'm about to make six phone calls. Right? Don't go gangster, y'all. That's not what I'm talking about. But it's like this. I got my finger on the keyboard and I'm ready to press. It's going back active if you start that mess. Huh? No, don't go get, y'all didn't hear it from me, I'm just kidding. But here's the thing, when you have a listing, right, you kind of get, you got to push it down because the Bible teaches us to be humble, right? But you kind of get that little, that little thing, right? Like, what, you know, I got a lot of offers on this house and I know I'm going to sell it to somebody. Why don't you just go ahead and send me that terrible inspection report so we can put it back on the market and get even more money? Because we'll just tell everybody how bad it is and, and, and we'll get, you know, you see what I'm saying? But the thing is, and we, we call it popping it back active. Now, Barbara, who works for me, she's my assistant. She started with me eight months after I got my license full time, right? Because I'm a lot to manage, right? I had to start one right away. Now, Barbara's down with the owls. Y'all know about the owls? Y'all down with the Anybody down with the owls, OWLs? Y'all down with the owls? The older, wiser Lutherans, right? They bake pies. They, they, they visit the shut-ins, you know, all that kind of stuff. And Barbara called me up, Nolly, they're acting funny. Should I pop it back active? Barbara, it's cool. Don't, you know, go, go check on that pie. I got this. I, I got the handle, right? But I teach my, we call it popping it back active. And, and it, it kind of feels good to have that, you know. It, now, if you work in a buyer, what do you got to do? You, you got to get back in your car and hope that they still got it in them to buy something, right? When you work in the seller, you just pop it back on the market. Wait for the next person. Now you got more information. And you can really get it sold this time, right? Second time around. Reason number eight, you can run your business from anywhere. I'm going to talk some about this later on. But you could be in Maui. When I was in Ma my wife and I were in Maui, um, her mom just passed away. You know, it was very traumatic for us. Her mom moved in when she was 70. Her mom was 70 years old when she moved in with us. She moved in about maybe four months, four months. This is my wife over here, my lovely wife, uh, Josefina. I call her Pete, Josie, um, about four months after we got married. So it was like a two for one. Yeah? Uh, it's like, but wait, there's more. <laughs> Not one, but two. Yeah? And, and so we were like, oh, yeah, your, I'm like, oh, yeah, your mom's going to come stay for a little while. That's cool. 23 years later. Right? But, but her mom is, is the jewel of our heart. We loved her so much. You know, she ended up with Alzheimer's eight years ago. Very, very traumatic. So we took a couple of weeks in Maui. Uh, we just got back a couple, maybe a month ago or so. And I took several listings while I was in Maui, right? I worked one hour a day, you know. Um, I didn't tell all my clients that I was in Maui, right? <laughs> Cell phones work everywhere, y'all. You don't have to tell your clients everywhere you go. Does that make sense, mm -hmm. right? So, but the, here's a guy in his pajamas. He's got the two thumbs up because he just did a deal, right? I do a lot of listings over the phone, phone-based listing appointment. Right. I've got a person on my team, Linda. She goes out to the house and she does all that stuff. You know, the stuff that y'all could do. You know that houses, you don't have to see a listing to sell it. Did y'all know that? Yeah. You know, why do you go look at it? Because the seller wants you to. Right. So I just convinced my sellers that I'm no good. I, you know, I'm talking to Mike. I'm like, Mike, um, now we're going to get your house sold, but I'm not the one. My business partner, Linda, she's the one that's going to go out because I'm not good at looking at houses. What you mean you're not good at looking at houses? You sold 153 houses? Well, I'm good at getting them sold. I'm not good at looking at them. You know, I'm the marketing guy. I'm like the Wizard of Oz. 
You know, some of y'all, some people are like, man, Nolly, do you even exist? We never see you anywhere, right? We just see your, your, your picture. You know, I, I'm behind the scenes. I get it done. But Linda, oh, she'll check out, she'll, she'll me you know, measure the length of your shag carpet, you know. She'll, she'll, she'll look at your pool. She'll, she'll test the pH levels of your pool. She'll look at the kind of granite. She does all that. She's good at it. I'm no good at it. So I let her do that while I get your house sold. Would that be okay? I had one seller, he said, Nolly, please, I said, but, but I really wanted the listing. I said, now, now his name was, uh, I can't remember, his, I'll just use Mike. I said, uh, now, Mike, in your case, this is the way I normally do it, but in your case, I'll go ahead and come out to your house, because I really wanted that one, right? Nolly, please don't come to my house. Could you send Linda, right? Because, <laughs> see, did y'all know that sellers will do anything you ask them to do, or buyers, if they understand why they're doing it, right? They understand you work as a team. You're not good at that. You're good at the other. Does that make sense? Now, why do I not call uh, Linda my listing agent or my listing assistant? I call her my business partner. Why, why do I do that? Same level, and she gets the respect when she goes out. She's my business partner. Does that make sense? Even if you have an assistant, that's a business partner, right? Now, reason number nine, you get to adopt the buyer. You get to adopt the buyer. Y'all know about that? Yep. Huh? So guess what happens when, uh, your name, darling, right here? Gina. Gina. Gina and I just closed a deal. She was the buyer agent. Obviously, I'm doing the listing, right, because I do listings. Yeah. And uh, I do buyers, too, y'all, but just a little bit. And, and then Gina, uh, what happens to Gina's client, her buyer client? She goes up in my database, right? <laughs> Uncle Nolly's going to take good care of her buyer person. Now, let me ask you this. When the deal, when it closes escrow, whose client is it at the close of escrow? Huh? No one. Anybody. Huh? Everybody. Anybody's. <laughs> See, when you take a listing or you work with a buyer, it's like an election. <laughs> they hired you for mayor, right? You're the mayor of my property, right? But when you close, your term is over, right? It's time for Uncle Nolly to step in and get it done for the next time around. That's the reason why, check this out. No, I'm serious. Now, and, and the thing is, I won't even call Gina's buyer because I don't go to, to that level. Like, you know, I would expect her buyer to hang up like, fool, who are you? I'm, you know, they can always opt out. I put them on drip. I drip them. You know, I drip them pretty good. But they can always opt out. Most of them don't. It's the reason why Ty called me up just a few months ago. And he said, Nolly, um, I need to get your house. I need to sell my house. He's talking to Barbara. Barbara sent me the information. I was like, who is this guy? I pulled him up, and this happens all the time. And he was a buyer from one of my listings, right? Now, this is the easiest script ever when I'm working with these people, right? I called him up. I said, Ty, I understand you want to get your house sold, right? Yeah, Nolly, I need to sell it. And Ty, you know I sold that house before, don't you? Yeah, you did. You did sell it, Nolly. And you know I can sell it again, don't you, Ty? Yeah, I know you can sell it. Ty, let's just get together and talk about the price. That's all we need to discuss, right? It was a, that was a three, that was a, I just did the listing appointment with him, guys. Did y'all hear that? Yeah. Right? I sold it before, yes, and you know I can sell it again, right? You need to sell your house, I sold it before, I can sell it again, yes. I have those conversations all the time. Why do they call me? Because they never hear from their original agent again, okay? And Uncle Nolly just adopts them. I feel sorry for him. I don't leave, leave him out there like that. <laughs> Right? Reason number 10 is seller listings are highly leveraged. Right? What Gary teaches us is that we take the listing, we throw it over our shoulder, our team catches it, and they take it all the way to the closing table. Right? I take the listing, I throw it over my shoulder. I take another one, I throw it over my shoulder. My team catches it, they take it all the way to the pay window. Let me give you the analogy that I use for a team that I, Kevin Cooper taught me out of uh, Elk Grove, California. Uh, have you ever been on an airplane, like as a passenger, right? You've, you've flown on a commercial. Now, remember back in the day before it was like real weird? Like, like it got weird, right? After 9-11, after it got real strange. But back in the day, you would get on the plane, and who was the first person you saw? The captain. The captain. Yeah, yeah, welcome, welcome, welcome aboard, welcome aboard. Yeah, glad you're here, welcome aboard. The first person you saw was the captain. Now, who was the last person you saw when you got out? The captain. The captain. Did you see the captain during the flight? No! If we see the captain during the flight, we got a problem! 
Now, I know these planes fly themselves. I understand that. But I do not want to see the captain during the flight. Do you? You know, handle your business before you get in the cockpit, right, and handle it after. Don't be trying to get up and go to the bathroom while I'm on the plane. I want to know somebody's up in there, right? That's just how I am, right? Y'all might be different, but I'm not, you know, these, these uh, uh, self man. Now, we know that planes fly themselves. But what I tell my sellers is this. Make no mistake about it. The captain, the captain he was there the whole time. He was there the whole time. I'm, gonna, I'm taking you from here to sold. That's my job. I'm flying your bird, your house, to sold. You're not going to see me. In fact, when it, whenever uh, Gina and I just signed a listing agreement and stuff, I'm like, Gina, I'm so, I'm so sad right now because I'm not going to see you again. You know, this is a teary moment, right? Because I'm, you know, I'm getting your house sold. I got, I have people that they, they do peanuts, they get you a blanket, water, uh, if you need a, a, a Sprite or even a, a cocktail, they'll take all good care of you, right? I don't handle any of that stuff. I get, I'm, I'm flying you to sold. That's my job, right? If you see me, at any point during the transaction, we got a big problem. That's why sometimes if I'm calling my sellers, just because I want to talk to them, Nolly, what's wrong? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that thing. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's, it's all good. It's all good. I'm, I'm just calling to check on you and see, you know, whatever like that. They do not expect to hear from me, and they don't want to hear from me. But they get AAA service, right? Do you want the captain handing peanuts to you during your flight? No. And you don't want Nolly Williams doing that either. That makes sense? Guys, that's the top ten reasons why you should focus on listings. Are y'all convinced? Okay. Let, let me hear it if y'all convinced. Are y'all convinced? All right. Okay. So we're going to move on, and we're going to talk about the top tools of a successful listing agent. Well, thanks so much for tuning in to this episode of the Success with Listings podcast. If you are serious about taking your real estate career to the highest heights, making more money and helping more clients while working less hours and spending more time with your family, be sure to get your copy of my free book, Triple My Listing, absolutely free at successwithlistings.com. Now, you want to be sure that you subscribe to the podcast and check out successwithlistings.com to get your copy of my free book. Hey, I'll see you on the next one.